Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 621. The Coronary Artery Calcium Scan and Heart Disease. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at Biobalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk uh, about a cardiology subject, but it's a subject that is is very important to all of us, uh, even people who are a little younger than my usual audience, so listen up. Um, We have a test that I've talked about in the past, but now it is more um, accepted by cardiologists and other doctors as a good test to tell whether you have um, plaque in your arteries and in that way tell whether you're going to have a cardiac problem or a cardiac MI um, in the future. Now, what this test is, is a two-picture CAT scan, just two pictures. CAT scans are usually hundreds of pictures. This is just two pictures, one picture, of your heart when it is dilating, when it's filling up with blood, and one picture of your heart when it is contracting and squeezing blood out of it. In these two pictures, the uh, radiologist is looking for white plaque or calcium plaque that is located inside the arteries of the heart. This, This plaque indicates, or this calcium indicates that there is plaque in the artery, and that is significant because if you have plaque in your, in your heart arteries, you have plaque throughout your body. So on all your arteries, it is not just confined just to your heart. It's going to be on the arteries that go to your brain and to your pelvis. So it's an important thing to find out whether you have plaque at whatever age you are. And I would generally not order this at an age younger than 50 unless you had a very high cholesterol and you had a high inflammation and family history and or family history. So in the past, what we've done is, oh, your cholesterol is high, which is one piece of information. Here, take a statin. Your cholesterol will come down and you'll be protected. Well, that's not necessarily true. If you have um, a high cholesterol, that does not equate to heart disease. High cholesterol can be in people who don't have uh, a, any kind of plaque. They don't get any kind of plaque, and they don't die of heart disease. You can have high cholesterol without having any of that in your future. It is just one fact that should be used to look at your risk of heart disease, but not the only fact. And honestly, I don't think you should take a statin unless you know that you're already collecting plaque. So... Let's talk about plaque for a second. Um, What what happens to your arteries as we get older is that uh, our arteries become damaged by this buildup of cholesterol plaque. Now, just because it's made out of cholesterol doesn't mean high cholesterol is causing it. It just means it's made out of cholesterol. It also is made out of calcium. That helps us see it on an x-ray. So... As we get older with our family history, if we smoke, if we drink too much, if we don't exercise, if we eat junk food, um, if, if we have all the bad habits that you can have, that is each one of those is building up our risk for having heart disease. But it doesn't promise that you're going to have heart disease. There are some people who have done all the wrong things and still don't have heart disease. So what heart disease is, is that the arteries that are going to the heart, and you know the heart's a muscle, and it's a muscle that never rests. Unlike all your other muscles in your body, the heart beats every day, all the time, until you die. So it is a muscle that has to be fed with oxygen and and with nutrients from the blood. 
So there are multiple different arteries in that, that go around your heart, on the outside of your heart, and through your heart to deliver both oxygen and nutrients. These arteries are very important, and having clean arteries means you're getting plenty of oxygen, and as long as your lungs are fine, getting plenty of oxygen and plenty of nutrients to your heart so that your heart can work normally. If you get plaque on your blood vessels, what that does is it's like if you have a pipe and you, and you fill it or you have rust or some other accumulation on it, then the area that the, the pipe that was this big can, ends up being this big. The, the blood can go through a smaller, a smaller um, tube or a smaller pipe. And what that does is give less oxygen and less nutrients to your heart and to actually to your brain, to, to everywhere in your body. So because the plaque builds up and lines the arteries, you are basically decreasing oxygenation and decreasing nutrition. So the heart muscle is working harder to try to get more of the oxygen. So you're putting stress on your heart, you're putting stress on your lungs, you're putting stress on everything, and you may have um, you may have high blood pressure because of this, because lining the arteries with this plaque makes them stiff, and they can't dilate. Like when you run, your blood vessels dilate so that they can bring more blood to your muscles. Um, dilation of the of the arteries is very important, and with plaque lining them, you cannot dilate them. So what happens in heart disease is you have collected enough of this plaque uh, on, on the inside of your arteries that eventually it blocks, the whole vessel is blocked. And usually that's one vessel that is blocked, and it then deprives a part of your heart fr uh, from oxygen and from nutrients. And that part of your heart hurts, when you, and that's a heart attack, it hurts, and that part of your muscle dies. Unless it's, unless it's treated immediately with something to recanalize or reopen the blood vessel. So that's what a heart attack is. But the buildup for a heart attack is lifelong. And some people, through bad habits or through, through genetics, um, make a lot of plaque on the inside of their arteries. Now, um, it's very important to know that just high cholesterol doesn't do it. High cholesterol has to be combined with a lot of inflammation, daily, 24-hour inflammation that actually caught, it's like a glue and it sticks the cholesterol to your arteries. So inflammation plus cholesterol, which could be high or just normal, it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be high to stick to your blood vessels. So inflammation plus the cholesterol makes plaque. After you have that plaque, just the blood flowing by, it, it's irritated. It's irritating the blood, basically stirring the blood up and making it kind of not go forward, but kind of make eddies in it, like an eddy in, um, around a drain as the drain's dra uh, draining. In any case, it, that kind of action builds up the plaque and makes the artery uh, stiffer, and it makes it um, impervious to really good blood flow. It just cuts the blood flow down. You know what, what happens when you take a hose and then you kind of squeeze it. It's not getting as much water out. So that's what happens with your blood flow. Um, my own experience um, with um, heart attacks and, and risk of heart attack um, began in 2002 when... Um, Heart disease, I was only 47, and heart disease became very close, too close for comfort when a friend of mine who I had operated with the day before, he was a general surgeon, literally, no warning, no nothing, died, you know, in his kitchen of a heart attack. So when that happened, I was, I, it came home to me that it's very important to know if you have heart disease or not and do something about it if you do. So when that happened, I found a way besides just looking at cholesterol, because I've had cholesterol, high cholesterol my whole life, but I don't have any plaque. 
So I knew that. So I didn't want to follow that. That wasn't going to tell me anything. So I, um, I went to find a test and there was a new test out called the cardiac or the coronary calcium scan. And, um, and at that time, the test was very expensive, but I didn't care. I needed to know if my husband and I had plaque. So, so I basically um, paid the money, and we both got our coronary artery tests done, and we both had zero plaque, which was awesome. So then I didn't have to worry about it all the time. I didn't have to worry about my husband dying for no apparent reason or me dying for, you know, just out of the blue. Um, so that took away my anxiety. Um, then at that, then at that point, the tests started coming down in cost. I would, I, I really couldn't recommend it to most of my patients because it was just so expensive. I thought it was terribly expensive. I didn't want to make my patients have to pay that out of pocket because it wasn't paid for by insurance and it still isn't. However, now most of the hospitals have decreased the price on this test down to between 50 and $99. It's out of pocket, but it gives you between five and 12 years of security knowing you don't have plaque on your blood vessels. Now, if you uh, do have plaque on your blood vessels, then it might, be, it might be helpful to be on a statin or a drug like Zetia, which actually removes plaque, or to take a supplement like Arteriocell, which actually in six months can decrease your plaque by 30% if you have it. So if we know you have this, then we can go forward with different treatments to try to decrease the plaque and actually clean up your life. Stop the smoking, the drinking, the uh, lack of activity, the eating the wrong things, and we can clean up your act so that you won't build more plaque. So when this happened and I found out I was clear and the price came down, I started recommending this to my biobalance patients. Because you know, I started biobalance in 2002 after I had my ovaries out and then I had it, and then I um, figured out how to treat myself from Gino to Terra in California. And I then, he trained me and I developed my own practice. But I was also an OBGYN at the same time, still delivering babies, doing surgery. So I was working kind of double time. But my biobalance practice started slowly. So as I got patients who needed hormones, I also looked at all of their health studies because I didn't want to just be the doctor that just handed out hormones. I wanted to be the doctor that made people healthier. Giving you hormones is the foundation. Replacing the hormones is the foundation to being healthy as you age. But there are so many other things that we have to clean up or treat if people have developed these problems in the meantime while they were getting older. So I started evaluating people for heart disease. I started evaluating people for strokes. I started taking their homocysteine to see if they were at risk for both heart attack and stroke. And I started ordering cardiac calcium scans because 50 to $99, that is very low, a very low price compared to being on statins your whole life for no reason. And statins aren't without side effects. Statins can cause what they now know, call statin dementia. Your brain is made out of cholesterol. Statins are given to people who they think might have heart disease in the future. It's a preventive measure, but it also decreases the cholesterol that goes to your brain to help re actually help repair your brain. So if you don't repair your brain, your brain shrinks and you end up getting dementia. So they have, they have now proven that statins can cause this. I have also seen people, mostly women, who take a statin and they hurt all over, but their doctors are like, so what? We're saving you from heart disease. Well, are we? Do you even have heart disease? Are you even at risk? I mean, if you don't have any plaque by the time you're 50, probably you're not that high a risk for having a heart, heart attack. So why would you be on a statin that's causing you to hurt all over? Well, it turns out that statins were developed before 2014, and statins were never tested on women. They were tested on just men. The FDA didn't test drugs except for like hormone, female hormones on any females. So every drug that was developed and passed through the FDA by 2014 were not tested on women. So we have a lot more side effects than men because 
if they knew all these side effects that women have to certain drugs, they may not have even passed them through. However, now they do on new drugs, they are testing them on women, which is at least a small step for mankind. <laughs> and uh, at least now we have the ability to know if a drug is going to cause us problems. But when I had women who couldn't think because they were on statins, even men who couldn't think because they were on statins, even though they'd had their hormones, they still couldn't think. And I'd take them off the statins, they could think better. And when I had people on statins who ached all over and I took them off the statins for a period of time to see what would happen, they didn't, they didn't ache anymore. So I thought, you know, statins are pretty expensive for you and your insurance company. And um, so $50 to $100 is nothing compared to what a statin would cost for a year. So I started saying, telling people this, let's see if you even have a reason to take a statin. Let's do your cardiac calcium scan. A picture is worth a thousand words, and it really is. So we started sending people for cardiac calcium scans, and we got pictures that showed us that they had nothing. And they, I mean, they literally had no plaque, and they were on stat on a statin. So we would say, you know, I don't think this is going to help you. Let's repeat it in five years or 12 years, depending on the studies that says that it gives you a um, reassurance for five or 12 years that you're not going to have a heart attack. And then we'll repeat it and see if you still have no, no plaque. So that has worked out in a really good way because people who need statins stay on them. People who don't need statins don't stay on them. So uh, it has given me a picture to show my patients, and a pers they, they grade the amount of calcium. If you don't have zero, it goes all the way up to 1,000. So there are low risk, and then all the way up to high risk, uh, go to the cardiologist or the um, thoracic surgeon right away. Um, so, this, so we now know how to manage these things, and we now know and can see, the, and can see plaque where it is. Uh, one other thing about plaque is that um, you heard me say it happens with inflammation. So oftentimes, if someone has chronic inflammation and they have plaque and they have high cholesterol, statins are not the not o the only thing to give them. They should decrease their um, inflammation. One of the ways to decrease inflammation is to uh, lose weight and to exercise. Another way is to take Celebrex or aspirin. So all of these things. Um, that we can do if you do have plaque, we can add to we can add to your regimen and get either get rid of it or keep you from forming more plaque. But we can always check it with another cardiac calcium scan. When we did this, uh, my husband and I did a second cardiac calcium scan when I was um, 63 and he was 67. And at 63, on my second one. I still had no plaque, but he had developed plaque, and he was on a statin the whole time. This is before I knew a lot of this, and he, he was still on the statin, but he developed plaque. So his cardiologist said, well, this isn't working, so let's decrease your inflammation, and let's go to something that actually improves your plaque, like cleans it up. So he put him on um, Zetia, which is a cholesterol-lowering drug that actually decreases plaque, and he put him on Celebrex, which is an anti-inflammatory, which keeps his inflammation down. Now, as most guys who are 60, he has several joints that have been replaced and another joint that needs to be replaced. And every time you have a joint that needs to be replaced, you have a lot of inflammation because that joint's rubbing and causing your body to react by sending white cells in and, and, and inflammation into that area to try to fix it. It doesn't fix it, but your body's trying and it doesn't know the difference between that and an infection or, or a trauma. So when he had that, then we went on to the next step for him and I just stayed off statins. I take Celebrex for a different reason, um, but honestly, I felt so much better when I found out I had a zero plaque and we're gonna retest him in three years from, and that'll be like now, um, to see if all of the things that we've done has decreased his plaque load. But he's nowhere close to, to um, having a heart attack and that's also reassuring. 
And I have to say this, I think relieving anxiety for patients who are worried about a disease or a de disease their parents had or a disease you know their parents died of or a cancer or something like that, there's a lot to be said for relieving anxiety because anxiety is, is detrimental to your health. It breaks your health down. You, you don't sleep, you, you're irritable. I mean, honestly, this is, it's not a good thing to be in a state of anxiety all the time worrying about, about disease. So in my practice, I make sure if people are worried about heart disease, we do the cardiac calcium scan. If they're worried about cancer, then we now have a test to test to see if they have cancer anywhere with one blood test. And uh, if they're, you know, if they're worried about their their brain, obviously all we have to do is talk to them to know if their brain is working nicely. But um, that that usually is fixed with our hormones. So that we are trying to re reduce anxiety in all of our patients so that it does not break their health down. Um, so this test is, I, I use it and it's very important to me. There are many cardiologists who do not use it and, uh, or who do not like it partially because it decreases the, the ne necessity of having like a stress test, a, a treadmill test, or a, uh, other kinds of tests that they offer and that they're very comfortable with. To me, this is kind of the best test uh, you can do for a screening test to see if you have a problem. If you have a different kind of problem with your heart, which is an arrhythmia or a valvular problem, the valve is, is bad, or you have an aortic aneurysm, those are all different. They don't have anything to do with your arteries that feed your heart. I would love to be able to wipe out heart disease. Um, that'll, that in reality will never happen, but I'd like to lower it as much as possible. And this to me is a tool that I can use to lower it. And I'd like to decrease the people on statins because I think it's gone way overboard. It, statins were meant to be given to people with an LDL over 190 and other problems besides just a high cholesterol, but nobody listens to that anymore. Currently, the um, European Union has decided that no women should be on statins. That's what they came out with just a few months ago. And the American cardiologists are fighting that all the way. However, I think that's probably, um, anytime they say all or none, I get a little nervous about any medical treatment that is all or none because everybody's different. There are some people that will probably need to be on uh, statins even though they're female. So I'm, I'm not necessarily a proponent of that. I just am telling you that that's what they've come up with in the recent past. Now I have a little, um, a little picture here for you to look at. That is uh, that describes the pla what plaque looks like on the inside of your arteries, and um, how what it looks like to the doctor looking at the films, and it also describes the, other, the things that cause heart disease and plaque in your arteries, which includes cholesterol, blood pressure, diabetes, body weight, age, sex, family history, cigarette smoking, and I'll say inflammation. They didn't put that on here. Probably next year. <laughs> so. If you want this test, you don't even need a doctor's order. You can go, you can go to a freestanding um, uh, cardiac uh, evaluation center that has a CT scan and does this test, and you can pay for it and get the results. So you would have to have a doctor to help you interpret them and tell you what to do, but that's the second step. If it's zero, you just can feel better about yourself and, and still clean up all those other things, smoking and drinking and all of that. But because that affects everything else in your health. But for this particular health problem, which is the number one killer of people in the United States, this is what you should do, actually all over the world. So be healthy, find out if you really have a problem or not, and then make your decision as to whether you need a statin, but everybody needs to stop the bad habits. Honestly, we're overwhelmed with people with bad habits. I'm trying to help get people healthier and I do walk the walk and many of most of my my staff walks the walk because we've seen what happens when you don't you don't want to have the future uh, come up and in incapacitate your brain or your body or your heart 
You don't want to have to have a wheelchair sticker on your car and not be able to walk into a store from the parking lot. So hear me, I want you to be healthier and I want all my patients to be healthier as well. And this is what I tell them. So thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.